Test positivity rates have been steadily growing over the past two months, increasing around 8 percentage points since July to a 12.5% seven-day average. This is higher than last winter's surge, although testing data has become less reliable with decreased access and plummeting rates. However, wastewater surveillance confirms what testing suggests infections are rising nationwide. Hospitalizations, the second key indicator, are also trending upward. New daily admissions have increased over 87% since summer began. The Labor Day holiday will likely drive further transmission and hospitalizations, but hospitals are far from the overwhelming surges of previous waves. So far the rise in cases has not had a dramatic impact on hospitals. Public health experts still recommend people take typical precautions like vaccinating, masking, and isolating to prevent serious outbreaks. Some people are very concerned. Most aren't thinking about COVID-19 at all. The right approach is somewhere in between. We now have enough tools for individual protection without mandates. If you're wondering what to make of the latest increase, you're not alone. Here are the top two questions commonly asked. Should I hold off for the upcoming new booster? It really depends on your individual circumstances. With the current increase in cases, if you're in a high-risk category, you might not want to delay. The Food and Drug Administration is anticipated to authorize a third version of the vaccine tailored to recent variants by the end of September. However, individuals aged 65 and older or those with compromised immune systems might opt not to wait for widespread availability of this shot to bolster their immunity. The current bivalent vaccine still offers protection against severe illness, hospitalization, and death. The CDC is set to provide age-specific recommendations on September 12th during a regulatory meeting. If you're sending your children off to college and believe they won't be able to access the new booster next month, it is recommended to get them the bivalent booster now for the sake of convenience rather than waiting for timing considerations. In this case, convenience outweighs timing. How long should I isolate after being infected? When you test positive, the general guideline, as outlined by the CDC, is to isolate for five days initially, followed by five days of wearing a mask. However, COVID-19 guidelines come with some exceptions. You can conclude your isolation after five days if you are either symptom-free or if your symptoms are improving and you haven't had a fever for 24 hours. If you still have a fever, continue your isolation until you've been fever-free for a full 24 hours. Wearing a mask around others should continue for a total of 10 days from when your symptoms first appeared. If you receive two negative tests, each separated by at least one day, you can discontinue mask use before the full 10 days. If you reside with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 or have been in close contact with such an individual, health authorities recommend wearing a mask for 10 days. These guidelines also apply to school-aged children, although your child's school may have its own policies. If one of your children contracts COVID-19, but their sibling tests negative and remains symptom-free, there's typically no need to keep the asymptomatic child home from school, but it's important to keep a close eye on them for any signs of developing symptoms.